Buenas tardes a los que hablan español. Mucho gusto. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. People say that our community needs more scientists, more writers, entrepreneurs, and social leaders. But that's why society should focus on childhood, allowing them to be entrepreneurs from childhood. So let's imagine that you are a child who wants to be a baseball player. What should you do? Practice. Of course, practice and go to the baseball school. If you want to be a pianist or a violinist, you should go to the music school. If you as a child wants to be a singer, there are places where you can be trained. But if you want to be an environmentalist, where can you receive training? There are no places. There were no places to go. In 1995, I was 10 when I decided to start doing something to help grandmother Earth. I invited my friends to meet after school and I told them about environmental issues. We wanted to protect animals, plants, and humans, and dreamed about spreading our movement around the world. Our name was HUNAP and it stands for Humans Unite with Nature in Harmony for Beauty, Welfare, and Willingness. We discovered that the worst environmental problem that a society has to face is not pollution, nor extinction, nor illegal trade, neither global warming. The worst environmental problem is the lack of education. Because this is the root for all those problems. But we, as a group, we have faced our own challenge the lack of credibility because of our age. Fortunately, and after 19 years, we survived it. <laughs> yeah. And now we were focused on education as our main element to solve and to eradicate environmental problems. Education is a continuous process where a person acquires knowledge, awareness, and skills to make decisions. Education requires some continuous time and efforts. And in fact, I am still astonished about why in my country and in the world, environmental education is not included as a main subject in the school's curriculum. When Mexico is one of the mega diverse countries in the world, natural resources are the basis of our, of our economy. And education is a tool to eradicate poverty. If a country has problems with the economy or development, this country can survive and will have more time to solve it. But if a country has problems with its natural resources or environment, this country will not have more time to solve it because this is the basis for their health development and growth, their heritage and their sovereignty. So with my group, in, I decided to found a nonprofit institution in 2006. And now we were focused in four different programs. Let's just see each one of them. The first one is methodologies, to teach in a fun way those topics that seem complex to explain. Now, thanks to the children's contributions, we can approach them in an easy and transcending way. In fact, children are very creative. Thanks to their ideas, we have generated books, stories, handcrafts, and games. Children show us every day the best language to teach. This was a mournful march to recognize the extinct species in Mexico, the 41 extinct species. When I say environmental education, I don't refer to natural sciences. I mean a comprehensive vision of all the issues around. Here you can see how we approach water culture, biodiversity, energy, environment and ecology, humanitarian culture, and also laws. In fact, we have an educational plan called Mondambientes. Mondambientes in Spanish stands for 
changing environment. It's like a career to be an environmentalist from childhood. During two years, a child needs to learn about these 17 main topics, but the information is according to their age. Let's to see only one, the number 14, to organize fishing and sustainable development. A child is going to learn about close seasons, fishing techniques, ecosystems for fishing, conservation, native biodiversity and sustainable aquaculture, and then they can take action because now they have a comprehensive idea about how their actions have a positive impact on their communities. The second program is about courses with workshops where children are teaching other children. Yes, they are training their peers during two years in order to train them as environmental instructors. That's why I say that they are the heroes of our grandmother Earth. Because children's hands may be small, but their hearts are immense to save our planet. In fact, children who have participated in this program have learned about how to respect nature or how to respect uh, environment, but also this program has changed lifestyle. Due to the mentorship activities, there are children who started their own activities there are movements, and they have been awarded by the Mexican authorities. In fact, we have met with the last four presidents of Mexico. The third program is Sustainable Aquaculture Production System, where we are rescuing native species, like the Mayan apple snail. To the extent that our communities are now more aware of their natural resources, they will be able to properly use their native species, and also to reactivate their local economies. And finally, the fourth program is Seiba Pentandra. Seiba Pentandra is the name of the first high-level environmental educational training center in the world. In 2007, the city of Merida donated us a land. In 2012, we started the construction. Thanks to the Mexico Initiative Award and the Young Laureates Rolex Award for Enterprise, there were $500,000 to invest. It allowed us to build only the 30% of the construction. But this year, this year, we have a big challenge. We need to raise enough funds to complete the construction. Only $2 million. <laughs> yeah, and these are some areas that we need to build. We need uh, some museums, we need an aquarium, a library, and an experimental laboratory too. But why Seiba Pentandra is so important? Why there are other Mexican states asking for their own environmental theme park? Because with 100% of the construction, we will be able to receive 64,000 children a year with a successful methodology. We can be an ally for the educational system. Also, allow the space for young people, handicapped and elderly. With our expertise, we can train teachers and provide them methodologies and materials too. And also, with our expertise, we can contribute to generate the free textbooks for the educational system, like this one for the curriculum. And this project can be replicated in any place of Mexico or in the world. Now, I brought a new project, and you're going to be the first ones to know about this. In Seiba Pentandra, we reinvented the Noah's Ark. Yes, the Noah's Ark. We reinvented. In moments of crisis, the Noah's Ark saved, protected, and rescued wildlife, all the living beings. But now, our grandmother Earth needs our support, needs to protect the living beings now. Here are some features of, of the reinvented ark developed in Seba Pentandra. The first one is that this can cross geographical borders. Another novel future is that can adapt to the urgent needs 
of harmonizing the human's coexistence. Also, this size was redesigned so that all the tools required for sustainable management can be transported, constructed, or modified within the arc. This arc can improve on the adverse situations. And some contributions of this new arc is that if we can activate it and distribute this prototype around the world, we will allow a stronger human contributions. Also, we will ensure the protection of living beings on ground and oceans. We can harmonize the coexistence of cultures, and we can save natural resources. But thanks to children's ideas in my organization, we discovered that with this reinvented arc, we can save the most important species in the world, humans. Also, we need your contributions. I don't mean money, although it is also necessary. I mean your ideas, perseverance, and participation to consolidate it. Well, I think that it's time to discover this reinvented arc. Are you ready? <laughs> OK. This is the, the reinvented arc. <laughs> yes, all this time, I was talking about human brains. Our brains are like arcs. Each time that we make a decision to protect a living being, a plant, a human, an animal, we are acting like an arc. And this arc has always have been there. We only need to consolidate it and to reactivate it. We only need to distribute these arcs around the world as much as we can. That's why we need to consolidate Seiba Pentandra. That's why we need more environmental educational training centers around the world. That's why we need to train more heroes of Grandmother Earth. But we need to work together. Decision makers, media, companies, authorities, we do need you. See that if we work united with these new arcs, we will ensure a prosperous and harmonious, and harmonious life for our grandmother Earth.